Very good afternoon to everyone. Um, so first of all, I welcome you all to join our Rich5 booth here. Um, I am Niraj, uh, Niraj Dengle from Andes Technology. I'm working as a senior engineer in uh, Taiwan headquarter. And I would be talking to you today about if RISC-V is ready and it can become a force uh, in the HPC domain. OK, so for the RISC-V SOC's market trend, you can see this, uh, the pie chart here. Um, you can see from the 2021 to 2030 uh, in various applications, uh, RISC-V is growing. Um, what we will focus on in this talk is basically uh, application processors and also about the AI accelerators. So mostly depending, uh, mostly focusing about the high performance computing applications here. Uh, we see a rapid growth in the RISC-V domain uh, on these specific applications. And uh, I will talk about what we have in-house uh, to cater to this growing needs for high performance computing. So Andis provides a various wide variety of uh, RISC-V cores, uh, starting from small basic microcontroller CPUs and going up to uh, vector cores and application processors uh, and into data centers. So depending on how much um, operations per second you require for uh, processing power you require for your application, uh, like in smart cameras, you would need around 100 uh, mega ops uh, for smart home applications, 100, uh, like around 1 giga ops. And it can go up to almost 100,000 tops uh, for the HPC applications. So for HPC applications, we will, uh, I will talk to you about some uh, RISC-5 cores that we have in the market, uh, which, are, uh, which are specifically designed to uh, to cater to those audiences which are uh, which want this high performance uh, from the RISC-V CPU cores. The first core I would like to highlight is the AX65. So this is our latest offering, and also uh, it is our most powerful CPU core uh, to date. It's a 64-bit CPU core, uh, which is following the RISC-V extensions RV64, GC, uh, bit manipulation, and as well as some crypto extension, and the CMO uh, for the cache management operations. It is fully RVA22 profile compliant, and it's a 13-stage pipeline architecture. Uh, you can configure it up to eight core multiprocessors uh, in this core. Uh, you can have different configurations. The most is eight core. Uh, they have four wide front-end decode, so quad quad issue, and it's a, it, it also has 128 entry reorder buffer. The branch target buffer is also two level, and the TGL branch predictor allows you to uh, have more accurate branch prediction. There is also 64 kilobyte of uh, in private instruction and data cache, and eight megabytes and 16 way shared cache. So the BELS interface is 256 bit X AXI4, uh, MMIO and IO coherence port. Coming to our vector core, uh, this is a X45 MPV. So uh, this is this core has both scalar as well as vector uh, units. For the scalar part, uh, it is uh, following the RV64 GCBP uh, series by extensions plus Andis extensions. So there are some Andis optimizations and extra additional extensions that we provide. Uh, which are supported in all of all of our core offerings. There are up to eight cores pl per cluster that you can configure, and uh, for because this is X45 MPV, all of our cores which are starting with the A abbreviation, they are application processors, so they are all support. Uh, they are all Linux running running compatible. Uh, the the MMU configurable, uh, the uh, MMU it supports SV39 and SV48, which are which are RISC-V standard for the physical memory to uh, virtual memory translation schemes, and also the DSP for digital signal processing SIMD instructions. Uh, it also has the two-level uh, translation leukocyte buffer, uh, also physical memory protection, so you can configure uh, what kind of memory regions you want to be cacheable, non-cacheable, 
to limit the access to those specific memory regions. A branch prediction is also 128 entry branch target buffer. And I would like to highlight one uh, Andis extension, uh, which is ACE. Uh, we call it is an Andis custom extension. So this is something that we provide on top of uh, standard RISPY extension. Andis custom extension enables you to add your own instruction. Uh, so you will design your own hardware instruction. And we have a tool called Copilot. So what it is going to do is it will bring the instruction that has been created by the user uh, and it will combine it with the existing RTL of the CPU core. So you will get a new core in addition to the existing instruction set, you will have this one extra instruction so that you can minimize the, uh, the cycles uh, or for a specific memory, uh, for a specific algorithm that you want to uh, design a hardware instruction, you can compare, you run some profiling or performance monitor to see how much is the difference uh, you are getting after and before uh, you, you created this or your own custom instruction. For the memory sus subsystem, uh, I will talk about the high bandwidth vector local memory later. Uh, so it supports the HVM. Uh, it supports instruction and data local memory. These are the tightly, local, tightly coupled memories and also configurable uh, from zero kilobytes to eight megabytes. And for instruction and data caches, it is configurable from eight kilobytes up to 64 kilobytes. You can also have an optional level two cache uh, for which size can be either you can uh, have zero kilobyte, no, no L2 cache, or if you want to have it, it, it can go up from 128 kilobytes up to 8 megabytes. And it also includes the multi-core cache coherence logic, so uh, it, the cache coherence is taken care of. So for the interface, um, it is for vector, for interrupt, we, in, we implement the RISC-V standard, uh, which is the vector plic, platform level interrupt controller. Uh, with uh, 1,023 uh, 23 inputs and 250 by sources. Uh, so for the interface, uh, it also has debug and inter uh, trace interface. And bus interfaces are bas basically AXI master and AXI slave port. So through this AXI slave port, you can also access the uh, local memory. Optional in IO coherence port lets you uh, have uh, coherence with the masters uh, outside the core and there are some also power some power power saving features that Andy brings um, which are called power break uh, also have dynamic frequency scaling and wait for interrupt so you can let the CPU go into sleep mode and send an interrupt uh, to wake up and resume the instruction execution for the core mark performance of x45 MPV is 6.04 per megahertz uh, dry stone is 3.39 per megahertz and speaking is 4.07. So the performance you can see is compared to the ARM A53, A55 level. Uh, coming to the vector unit of uh, X45 MPV, uh, it follows the RISC-V standard extension for a vector. Uh, it also has some Andis extensions. On top of that, uh, we support data types like int4 and vector.product. Um, it also support uh, the ZBA combinations. And there are total 32 vector registers uh, in the vector processing unit. You can have different LML configurations to, com to couple these, um, group these vector, vector registers together. Uh, on depending on what kind of LML length you are using. There are 12 different vector functional units, uh, so depending on what kind of uh, instruction, vector instruction is it, is it a LU instruction, is it division, or other types of vector instruction, it is going to send to that specific vector functional unit, and that unit will start executing the instruction. Because the 45 MPV is a dual issue CPU core, two instructions can be uh, can be issued in parallel. And um, the full vector loads support, uh, we have the Unistride, Strided, Load Store, uh, Unistride fault only first. So all the, all the different kind of load store instructions have, are supported. Uh, SRVV is Andy's custom extension for vector. What I talked about earlier was for scalar. So SRVV is 
letting you access the VPU uh, directly uh, the, via the vector registers. So you can also write the hardware instru custom instructions for vector vector instructions as well. And the Andy streaming port, it is giving you another uh, path to access the VPU uh, through AC load store instructions. So you can uh, use you can use your memory connected uh, to the vector processing vector processing unit through this Andy streaming port to bring in the data directly to the vector processing unit. So you don't ha don't stall the main scalar pipeline when you are doing the load store for the vector vector registers. The data formats which are supported are int8 to int64 and floating point 16 to 64. In addition, Andy supports uh, bfloat16 um, and vector small int handling, int4 load, and vector dot product. ASRVV I mentioned earlier, and the VLAN here for the 45 MPV, it can be configurable from 128 bits to 1024 bits. Similarly, for uh, SIMD, uh, DLAN, it is configurable. These are all the possible combinations of VLAN and SIMD DLAN for X45 MPV. I mentioned it briefly earlier, um, the high volatile ve vector uh, local memory, uh, which is high bandwidth by HVM. So for HVM, it is a low memory, low latency access, enables you to have a low latency access from VPU to HVM and back to back HVM access is pipeline. So HVM is um, a reachable by the scalar unit, uh, but from for VPU and external coprocessor or DMA, you can access it via uh, a subordinate port, this SUVP. VPU will access the HVM using the DLAN wide interface, and maximum DLAN is of course uh, 1024 bytes. And VPU can do the DLAN bit access per cycle on each bank concurrently. So these are the uh, HVM banks. Uh, you can add, uh, depending on your requirement, you can add um, HVM banks. And um, you can select the address bit which is uh, configurable. So if you want to enable this HVM, all you need to do in the RTL is basically let the CPU uh, in the configuration tool know that this memory region exists and this memory region is specific for the HVM, which is a high bandwidth lo vector local memory. This is the pre-integrated AXI platform, AXI platform. So in addition to this beach, beach part, which is the 45 series core, uh, in the sky blue color part, we offer everything you see in this picture is offered by Andis. We call it A350 sub subsystem. So in addition to the core itself, we provide the bus matrix, the APV bridge, and all the peripheral drivers that you see here. So, uh, and also the DMA controller. What it is doing is basically giving you uh, almost uh, kind of like a small SOC uh, with drivers and everything so that reducing the time for evaluation and also reducing your time to market. Of course, uh, you can add your own IPs or third party uh, IPs to this XI bus matrix. You can directly connect. It supports various masters and as well as uh, slaves. Um, this is something new from our side. Uh, it's a Chilai development platform that we have. Chilai is a very beautiful mountain in Taiwan. And uh, it, is, it is for the main goal of Chilai development platform is to enable the software development uh, for application processors. It is running on 7 nanometer um, and running two of our cores, which is X45 MP and NX27V. So NX27V is the vector core, and 45MP is the application core which can run Linux. The Linux distribution it is running is OpenSUSE, and the applications which are already capable, uh, it is capable of running are LibreOffice, um, YouTube, TinyYolo, and more. So it is already ready, this platform. Uh, you can go ahead and play with it. So this is something that we uh, have ready for software development. Okay, coming to the software part, um, we also have for ANDLA what we have uh, and this deep learning accelerator as well as the uh, neural network uh, software development kit. 
talking more about the ANDLA i350 accelerator. It's a Andy's deep learning accelerator, which is for high performance and efficient deep learning. Um, and it is scalable and multi-DLA. So the good thing about this accelerator, it is compatible with all the CPU series that Andy's is offering. So you take any 22 series, so from 22 series up to the highest 65 series, all the Andy's cores uh, can utilize uh, this Andy's NDLA. So the main, the main target applications is uh, the NN applications, which are for image and video, as well as speech, speech or voice and audio processing. The performance uh, for, well, with configurable max, you have 32 to 4096, and int 8 uh, is the data type which is supported. And the performance which is targeting is uh, 64 G, uh, giga ops to 8 tera ops. Uh, it, has, it also has onboard memory, which is configurable from 16 kilobytes up to 4 megabytes. And also the power efficiency is uh, for get around for 5 teraops per watt, uh, it's at 28 nanometer. Okay, so for the working flow uh, of NDLA, the first stage is to load the offline compiled uh, commands, uh, with strict command streams, the weights, the input feature maps in the system memory. So safety memory, it could be a flash, SRAM, or DRAM. The second, second stage is the setup. So the CPU will set up the ANDLA uh, with all the addresses, uh, like SRAM, DRAM addresses, it will give, uh, give, it, to, give it to the CPU. And uh, it will let, let it know the, all the memory regions of, that will trigger the ANDLA. The third stage, uh, the NDLA will automatically, automatically start uh, running and run the iterative runs uh, for, to load the data into local memory and do the computing and store the results to the system memory. And the fourth stage is after, uh, after the computation is done, the in, it will send an interrupt to the CPU uh, when it, will, it is finished running all the commands and uh, it will just basically let the CPU know that I have finished the processing and the your computed data is ready. For the software part, uh, we also provide an NL library which has around 120 functions in eight different categories, uh, basically for the neural network functions like activation, basic math, uh, concatenation, convolution, and fully connected. Uh, so these are all the different uh, categories that we have our um, functions for the NN specific library. You, you can utilize this NDLA, the NN library, into data center applications for high performance computing. Um, for you can either have a control in the control cluster. You can have some CPU core like X45MP, which is an application processor, and in the compute clusters like Meta have done in their, in their application, uh, can have multiple NX27 Vs. So to summarize, um, I would say RVV, the RISC-V vector standard has opened the doors for um, a lot of high performance computing. And Andis is also delivering new CPU cores uh, which, are con which are compliant with the latest RISC-V standard. And the RISC-V vector application processors and Linux processors can really help uh, to run high performance computing applications. And you can also have flexible design because you can add your own instructions uh, through ACE, the Andes custom extension, or ACE RVV where you are writing your own instruction for the vector, instru vector specific instruction. So uh, all in all, I would say RISC-V is ready for HPC, I, ho I hope uh, it will be a very good, um, good next few years for the HPC applications as far as RISPI is concerned. Yeah, thanks a lot for listening to my talk, and if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to take them.